Hello, hello. Alrighty, today we are going to talk about some breathing things. Uh, I'm going to quickly do a recap of something I talked about in a prior breathing video, just of kind of the basic functioning of breathing um, and how it works, and then we'll jump into doing some exercises uh, to help strengthen your breath um, if you're if you're kind of having trouble with that. So, let's go back here. Okay, get my hair out of the way. Okay, doc. So when we breathe, there are a couple of parts of our body that are involved. One is the diaphragm, uh, which you've probably all heard of, and you may have remember you may remember me mentioning that the diaphragm is a muscular floor. Uh, it's not a donut. Sometimes I th people talk about it like it's a donut. It's not a donut. There's no hole in the middle. It's a muscular floor that attaches. Uh, all around the bottom of your rib cage and then back uh, actually to your spine in the back and it sections off your lungs from the rest of your insides and that's important for breathing because well <laughs> things move when we breathe and so it's good to kind of keep them in their proper uh, relative positions so that's the diaphragm, and it moves on its own. It's an involuntary muscle. You cannot control it. Um, you can influence it through a couple of external things that uh, we may or may not get to today. We'll see. But involuntary muscle that moves when you breathe, and the way it moves is when you inhale, so your lungs are going to fill up with air, the diaphragm is going to descend, go down, and when you exhale, it's going to go up. Inhale, down. Exhale up. Some of you may remember this model. I use it all the time. And I'm sorry, my sweater's like <laughs> making it difficult to demonstrate this. I didn't think about that. Okay, so the elbows in that model that we've just been doing with the little diaphragm, they represent the ribs. So your ribs are here, right? And um, the ribs are going to expand on that inhale to give room for the lungs to fill with air. And then they're going to swing down and in on the exhale. So that's what the elbows are doing. They are swinging out on the inhale, out and up, and down and in on the exhale. These are things that just will happen unless you do something to prevent them. So if you're feeling particularly tense or worried or what have you, um, then you know some of those things might be impeded. But this is how your body is naturally designed to work. This is good news because it means we can use the body's natural propensity to breathe and live to help us with our breathing process. So the first thing you're gonna do, I'm gonna roll my sleeves here so you can see my see my rib cage elbow representation a little better. Okie doke. So as many of you know, I like to start with the exhale because that is going to sort of kick your body into gear for wanting to inhale air in the most effective way possible. So I'm going to start with things low, and I'm just going to blow out the extra air that I have. Then I'm going to release. Diaphragm is going to drop down. Ribs are going to swing out and up. I am not going to suck my air in because that is hard <laughs> to do and does not help. Um, you know, really, there are very few times when you need to manage the inhale in your life. And especially with the kind of singing that we are talking about doing, um, it's just not it's just not necessary because we're doing a very kind of natural to your body, um, uncovering your natural sound. That's the goal. So let's do it again. We're going to exhale the old air out. And then you're just going to release and let your body do the inhale. Very good. So that's just something to do. You can actually do that as an exercise, um, just to kind of get your body engaged. You can also put your hands, we've done this before too, um, around on the back of you to where your ribs are in the back. Fun fact, you have more lung tissue in the back half than you do in the front half, um, just in case you care. So same idea, you're gonna exhale out all the old air. And then you're going to release and intentionally see if you can release into your hands in the back. Yeah, nice. 
good. We're gonna do it again. Exhale. By the way, if you at any point feel lightheaded, please stop. And then release for the inhale into your hands. Good. So that's just to kind of get you breathing, get you aware of yourselves and, uh, and the mechanism. Okay, so let's dive in to some exercises we can do to help um, strengthen the breath. I need to come up with a better term than that because I don't really, that feels forceful. I don't really like that, um, but it's kind of a common term. So to strengthen the breath or um, I think one of the, uh, the actual question that was asked phrased it. Um, how do you, you know, get to the ends of some of those long phrases? So let's break that down into a couple of different parts. Um, one thing you can actually do, oh, do I still have, oh, I think I got rid of it. I used to have one of those, um, they like give them to you in hospitals after you've had surgery, they have to like suck in or blow out and the little ball goes up and down. If you happen to have had surgery recently and they gave you one of those, keep it because it can be quite useful um, for just kind of getting your lungs to expand. Actually, I would say, uh, this is a caveat. Um, the one area where it is okay to kind of manage the inhale a little bit is when you are when you really are trying to uh, educate your body as to what it feels like to allow that much air in. I do still prefer to do it in the sort of exhale out all your old air, let your body do what it does method, because I think that in the long run is gonna serve you better. But if you're getting frustrated with that because you're not sure it's working, you're not sure what it feels like to have your lungs have kind of that much air in them, you can do you can do some things on the inhale to, to help just get your body used to what that's like. So let's do one of those. We're gonna blow out all our air again because I still don't think this is the, the best way to train your body. So blow it all out. And then through like an ah or an oh shape, you're just gonna breathe in. I kind of like the awe shape. In fact, if you could think about it, glasses, um, if you've ever tried to clean a mirror this way, you and your fog up. It's that kind of um, feeling of going like, ha ha, ha ha ha, with the hot air, but you're gonna inhale. Now, you shouldn't, don't, uh, I won't say you shouldn't, you don't need to hear it. If it's silent, that's good. Like that may even be better. If you do hear it, don't worry about it. Um. We talk about that in opera a lot, you know, if you're like, don't, silent inhale, yeah, okay, fine, but we're not doing opera, so don't worry about it. Um, if you if you make noise, don't worry about it. Um, okay, so that can be kind of a good thing, just inhale on that open awe. Oh, then sigh out. Oh, I start making me on a little bit. Okay, so that would be a way to manage the inhale slightly so that your body starts to feel what that's like to allow that much air back into it. Because a lot of times if we haven't done this in a long time or if we've never done this before, your body might be used to very shallow breathing. It can take a little bit to kind of get it used to other um, other forms of, of breathing. Deeper breathing, if you will. Okie doke. So let us now talk about extending the breath. And I'll give you a technical exercise for that and then I'll give you a trick. So the technical exercise, um, if you've ever sung in choir, you'll probably recognize this one is to blow out all your air either on an S, like a snake, or a sh, SH, like you're going I kind of prefer the SH, it feels a little more free to me. Sometimes with the S, I feel like my jaw gets a little bit tense, which I don't particularly enjoy. Um, so I'm gonna use the SH uh, for this one. The goal when you're letting your air out on the sh, is to have it be one consistent stream of air. So that would sound something like shh, all the way to the end until you run out. What you don't want is you don't want the kind of stop start shh, as you're kind of like, you know, like a car running out of gas. We don't want to do that. Um, when you feel like you're running out of air, stop. <laughs> This is not a contest. Actually, it's kind of nice that we're not doing this like live in a group because sometimes that happens where you, um, you know, the person next to you is like going longer. So you're like, I'm going to make it. And then you start to like freak out and get tense. So it's really nice that we all get to do this on our own in our own space um, so that we're not in competition, inadvertent competition with one another. I think that's kind of a wonderful uh, use of the Internet. 
So here's how it works. Letting the breath out on the SH and we are going to inhale on a count. We're going to inhale for a count of, how do I do this? A count of four. Then we're going to exhale for a count of eight. Inhale for a count of two. Exhale for a count of eight. So the exhale stays the same, always eight. Inhale for one and then exhale for eight. And so you're getting the body used to just extending that breath a little bit. And then we can actually um, start extending the exhale once we've kind of got this down. So let's do that together. Blow out your air first. Then you're gonna inhale for four. Ready, here we go. Inhale, two, three, and exhale. Inhale for two, one, two, for eight, out. In for one, out. And blow out all your air. Take a couple of normal breaths. Um, again, if at any point you feel lightheaded, stop. <laughs> Pause the video. Oh, here comes the dog. Are you gonna help us with our breathing? She's like, you're making weird sounds and I don't approve. Okay, so that is one exercise you can do. You can also, if that is feeling easy, um, if it's not feeling easy, you know, you can speed it up a little bit. It, it, you know, you can mess with the, with the tempo um, and don't worry about that. Uh, if that was really easy for you, extend it to 10, extend it to 12, extend it, blah, 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 so on and so forth. So that would be one exercise you can do to help extend your breath. Um, another one that I think a friend of mine told me they actually will sometimes have you do, um, again, after, you know, when you've had surgery or something and you need to do breath things in order to be released. I don't remember what this was for, but this is what she told me. They will actually um, sometimes, I think, have you like blow up balloons. Now, I think they might have special balloons or something that are not as like thick as our, I don't know. But blowing up balloons, the point of that is blowing up balloons is actually a really good trick for the breath. Um, if you have some kind of medical thing, you, you know, consult your doctor. I mean, I... I just always want to be really careful when I'm giving this advice because if there's an extenuating circumstance that I don't know about, this could potentially not be a good choice for you and I won't know that. So this is an all things being equal um, advice here for, for you to take uh, at your own risk. Um, <laughs> but blowing up balloons can actually be a really good way to just kind of like, um, it gets the abdominal muscles working, I think, in, in a little bit of a different way that is probably more extreme than you actually need for singing. Thank you. Um, but uh, but can still be helpful to kind of, again, think of it kind of like a pendulum swinging back and forth. I talk about this a lot um, in my lessons with folks. You kind of sometimes have to go to the extremes before you kind of bounce back to the middle of where you actually want to be. So this would be sort of an extreme example. The blowing up balloons would be an extreme example that is beyond what you will need for like regular singing. Now, uh, it, the trick um, for extending those phrases, a couple of tricks. One, start at the end of the phrase. So practice the phrase backward. Uh, let's see, a song. I didn't think about this. Um, Scarborough Fair. I don't know. That doesn't have long phrases, but oh no. Okay, well, do she move through the fair? That has longer phrases. So if you have my young love said to me, and maybe you actually want to go all the way through the whole thing. My young love said to me, my mother won't mind. That's a long phrase. So you would start at the end. My mother won't mind. And then you would do that a couple times back up. Said to me, said to me, my mother won't mind. And what you're doing in, in starting at the back and working forwards is you are training your body to know what it feels like. Again, knowing what it feels like is such a huge part of singing. I cannot overstate that. You're training your body to know what it feels like to finish that phrase easily and with good breath. And in doing that, it will then say, oh, I need to be in a position to do that well, so I'm gonna start better. <laughs> And it's kind of cool. It just sort of will do this um, if you practice in this way and are very intentional about it. Um, 
The other thing that you can also do is you can... My computer is going dark, which is... Okay, sorry about that. Training your body to do what it's supposed to do. The trick you can then add to that is when you're singing the whole phrase, sounds like a silly thing to say, but keep the whole phrase in your mind. So when I start, my young love, or I guess it's on this side for you because I'm backwards. My young love said to me, my, oh no, I'm out of breath. Okay. Keep the my mother won't mind in your head while you're starting. My young love said to me, my mother won't mind. Ah, now I have kind of both ends in my, in my head. And that helps my body, again, just sort of naturally appropriate the air that you need for the phrase. Because when you think about it, when you're in a conversation with somebody, how often do you run out of breath? Like, never. I mean, maybe if you're telling a really, really compelling story, and just in your mind, the way you were going to say this one part of it was going to be really cool, but, like, you took too long, and now you're running out of breath, and you get to the end. Okay, maybe. But by and large, most of us don't have that problem. Most of us don't have an issue running out of breath when we speak. Why? Because by the time we start the sentence, we already have in our mind where the end of it is. And so all we need to do is take that same principle and apply it to our singing, um, which is a little bit trickier, I think, just because it tends to go on for longer, which is um, a breath thing, but also really a mental thing of just keeping that whole phrase in your head. So that's the trick. Keep the whole phrase in your head beginning to end so you know where you're going. Um, it's like directing traffic. Uh, doing the uh, inhaling and out on a shush or a sss. Um, and I would say start with those. Oh, last one I'll give you. Lip trills. She's really gonna, she, she, Luna hates lip trills. I'm sorry, this is gonna not be fun for you. Um, the little lip bubbles that you can see, like little kids do them all the time. You could also let your air out on a lip trill. The pitch doesn't matter, that's not the point. Um, the point is just to keep going. I would probably change the pitch. I probably wouldn't try to do one note because that, I, I don't know, that just feels harder to me for some reason in my mind, that feels harder. But you know, go up and down, go all around. There she goes, she's gonna sing. Um, are you gonna sing? I'm sorry. Okay, I think I think that's all the lip trills. Luna's gonna be all the handle for the day. Um, <laughs> so there you go. There are your breathing tips. Um, I hope that was helpful. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a longer video, but I just wanted to to kind of get them all in there. Shushes, susses, and lip trills, which I will not demonstrate, and uh, and then blowing up balloons if you want to go extreme, and also keeping the whole phrase of the song you're singing in your mind when you start so that your body will uh, naturally distribute the air in the way that it needs. Okie doke, hope that was helpful. See you next time. Bye! Mm -hmm.